New or less familiar users of 3ds Max can take advantage of the task-based design workspace, which provides a guide to a selection of tools needed to achieve successful visualization. In this video, we will review some of the most useful tools for each of the design workspace tab. The intention here is to help you get started with 3ds Max by pointing useful tools for successful visualization. In the Get Started tab, we started the visualization by importing a Revit dataset. Then, we use the Merge button to bring in additional models. For example, a tree and an outdoor bench were merged to the scene. In the Get Started tab, other tools you might want to consider to help you learn the software are the Essential Skills video and Learning Path. To find more information on how to work and learn more on each tool, click on the Help button. In the Object Inspection tab, with the tape measure tool, we confirmed the length of the canopy to double check that our data was imported in the accurate system unit. Then, without wanting to delete any content, we hid the unwanted data such as the 2D character. We also turned off the display of helpers and camera dummies to declutter the viewport. Under the basic modeling tool, we added a canopy post and additional details to the model. For this example, we used a 3D cylinder with auto grid turned on so we can create the object directly on the concrete pavement. Then, under the material tab, we turned on display shaded maps to get visual feedbacks of our materials and started to add and edit the materials of our model. When editing the materials, the slate material editor will open by default. It is a great tool to learn as it offers great flexibility for editing. However, it can be daunting at first for new users. For easier material editing, you can always use the Compact Editor by clicking on the Material and Appearance down arrow. The Autodesk Material Library is supported by 3ds Max. To help navigate the library of materials, you might consider using bigger icons by right-clicking on the Material Type menu title and choose Medium or Large icon. Moving on to the Object Placement tab, we used the placement tool to position the accessories that we had merged in the early stage of our visualization. The bench was positioned under the canopy and instance for a few times. Then we placed the tree. Next, using the object paint tool, we painted multiple trees in the building surrounding. Using object paint is a quick way to paint a selection of objects randomly onto other objects. The visualization of our project started to really take shape with the modeling of small details such as the canopy posts, sidewalks, and flower boxes. To enhance the look of the model, we updated some of the materials. The addition of surrounding objects, such as outdoor benches, trees, and cars, added sense of scale and life to the model. Finally, we populated the scene with walking, sitting, and idled characters from the Populate tab. Again, to declutter the viewport and have a better view of the end result, we hid the populate environment objects and moved on to the view tab. Here, we explored our scene by looking at various perspective angles and every time we liked the angle of view, we created a camera from that view. So we now have access to multiple cameras around the building, some of which we have animated into walkthroughs. Finally, in the last tab, Lighting and Rendering, we fine-tune the lighting of the scene. Using the Light Lister help us select the various lights in our scene and make adjustments. For example, we can easily select the Daylight System and change the time of the day. We choose the end of the day so we can light the building with artificial light to give it a nice mood. The lighting adjustment works in parallel with the exposure control. Make sure to always adjust the exposure values accordingly. Since you are looking at the scene through a camera lens, the photography principles of shutter speed and aperture are translated through exposure values and need to be adjusted at the same time than the lighting solution. Then, we rendered a series of iterative rendering to make the final adjustments. Et voila! The final rendering was rendered using a PNG file with an alpha channel. The reason is that we wanted to composite a nice end-of-the-day cloud image as the background to help increase the drama of our final hero image. The design workspace was created to ease the learning curve of the software, use it as a guide or a quick access to the main features of the software.